Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'll be giving a gentle introduction to self-adapting language models. And when I mean gentle, that is to say that none of the formulaic and theory will be discussed in detail and rather the high level aspects of this paper will be introduced. And I would like to first start off by giving you ChatGPT's inter interpretation of this paper regarding meta-learning. So it says, imagine a student, a large language model, who before an exam drafts different sets of study notes, which in the paper are referred to self-edits. So it has a set of study notes, and then it skims each of the notes and takes a practice quiz. So this is a slightly flawed example because you have to imagine that it takes the study notes, it studies one quickly, and then takes a practice quiz, and then somehow forgets everything, which is possible with a large language model because we essentially undo the training. But in the context of like an anthropomorphic example, it's not really... Uh, imaginable, but just imagine that you can forget everything and then you study the second set, do the quiz, and then you forget everything and for however many study notes you made. And then this is how you test the ability for the given study note to improve your mark. So which notes actually improve the score and then refines the note writing habit itself, which is to say that by drafting different sets of study notes in a better way, we can improve our practice quiz score. And over many rounds, the student becomes better at writing effective notes, not just at answering the quiz. And that's what SEALs, uh, Outer Loop is doing, which is the main mechanism of the algorithm, which actually is right here. So in three seconds, you'll learn what that means. But uh, just quickly, SEAL means self-adapting large language models. Otherwise, um, the most pertinent results from this paper is surely the 70% ARC AGI score on a LAMA 1 billion parameter model. I think it's 3.2 or something like that, which is just unheard of. It's very impressive. And that was from 20% to 70%. So um, yeah, this is quite incredible in terms of the benchmark performance. So introduction is pretty... Boring, let's just jump right into the overview. So it says in each RL outer loop iteration, the model generates candidate self edits, which would be those study notes that I just mentioned in the ChatGPT interpretation. And this is, and then after this, directives on how to update the weights. Then it applies the updates and evaluates performance on a downstream task and then uses the results, resulting words to improve the self edit generation policy. So I'm not sure that we have a analogous thing to directives on how to update the weights here. Uh, yeah, it's kind of skipped in the human example, but we'll see it in this context here. So we get our context. And if we refer to that example, this would be the practice quiz. And then we make some notes. So the self edits here. And then what is this step here? Essentially, we're learning. Okay, so that would be the essential uh, analogous. So in this term, we're learning those notes, and then we update our weights. So it's interesting they use some uh, funny symbols like a hashtag across and a apostrophe here. So once we learn our weights, and we take the test, the quiz itself, and then we'll test our results. And then we use these results in a reinforcement learning setting to update our policy on drafting these self-edit notes um, in this state action reward Markov decision process. So this is the overall scheme. If it's slightly foreign to you, you kind of ca can't grasp it, then I would just say fall back to this explanation, which is simpler for us to understand, but uh, hopefully you did actually understand it. Let's just look here and see what they mean with self-edits. So they're saying that we train LMs to generate self-edits, which are natural language instructions that specify the data and optionally the actual hyperparameters for updating the model weights. So this is figure one right here. And we refer to such models as self-adapting LLM seal. So in this case, they do have an example where they literally specify the parameters for fine tuning as well. Like literally it says here, learning rates uh, eat um, 10 to the power of negative five, which I find like uh, quite interesting. And we will talk about that very soon. In terms of related work, they talk about synthetic data generation, which the name is an ontological term, essentially meaning creating data on your own, which would be the self edits here, the practice quizzes. Uh, sorry, not the practice quizzes, the practice notes. And then knowledge updating. So what is knowledge updating? This is generating additional fine tuning data using the information in context. So information in context would be the practice quiz. And then what else are we talking about here? Oh, there's two strategies. So the so first one being directly locating specific parameters that correspond to the individual task, which seems kind of like a local strategy, but they do the second one. In essence, generating logical implications, implications of a fact and fine tuning on them. And then they train these models throughout to generate more optimal fine tuning data, which is this step here, the policy update, so that the data that is produced by the policy is iteratively improved. Then we talk about test time training, which is um, saying temporarily adapting model weights based on the input the model uses, receives, sorry. And this is a LoRa adapter head fine tuning um, paradigm. So if you've used Unsoft before, for example, this is essentially what you do for supervised fine tuning. You just change the LoRa adapter head because it's very cheap, fast, and irre uh, reversible way to fine tune. 
And now, yeah, reinforcement learning for LMs. They talk about RLHF. This one is different, though. So CL applies RL not to optimize final answers or trace revisions, but to optimize the generation of self-edit data that is then used for weight updates. So it's more of a meta strategy, which is literally what the next point talks. So how to generate effective self-edits. And this is done by the outer optimization loop in this reinforcement learning process with the um, policy improving the generation of self-edits, which is what the slide says. The goal is to learn how to effic learn efficiently from task context. So given our quiz, what's the best way to extract a self-edit, which tells the model how to optimize its weights to perform good on this context and then improve our policy through that. So there's two loops within this process and in the algorithm pseudocode, this is apparent. Then they talk about Schmidt-Huber, which is interesting. It has some relation to the darwin Gödel machine, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, this is not the focus of the paper and then self-improvement. Uh, yeah, this is another autological term, so I don't really need to dive into that. They talk about SEAL. I think this is the third time that they propose SEAL and we're only in the third section, so it's quite impressive. It generates its own synthetic data and observation parameters, which are the self-edits. And self-edit generation is learned via RL, where the model is rewarded for generating self-edits that, when applied, improve the model's performance at the target task. And the two target tasks that they propose are knowledge incorporation and in-context learning. If you don't know what these mean, then we will explain it at that point. Um, there's two nested loops. There's an outer RL loop, which optimizes the self-edit generation itself, and then an inner update loop, which uses the generated self-edit to update the model via gradient descent. So we update the model via gradient descent here in this optimization step, where we're updating our weights. And then in the outer loop, we improve our policy to improve our self-edit generation. And altogether, we met to learn how to generate effective self-edits. So now we're getting into the meat of the paper. Let theta denote the parameters of the large language model. SEAL operates on individual task indices where context is the task that we would like to achieve. So the context containing information on the task. And then tau is the essentially the ground truth. It's the downstream evaluation. So evaluation meaning this is how we're going to test if the model has succeeded or not. This is essentially... Our, our reward function in essence. So in knowledge incorporation, C is the passage intended to be integrated into the model. This internal knowledge is why it's called knowledge, knowledge incorporation. We want to integrate, incorporate this knowledge into the model's weights. And then tau is a set of questions to see whether or not the model has incorporated this. So like if you say, if you want to give it context on the Egyptian pyramids, then you'll ask it, okay, which is the highest pyramid, uh, tallest pyramid in, uh, in Egypt, for example, and then see if it responds correctly or not, and then give it the, res the respective, the appropriate reward, okay? And then in few-shot learning, so this is knowledge incorporation now, few-shot learning, C includes a few few-shot demonstrations, so some examples to the LM to understand the task. And then tau is just literally asking a new question because, of course, if we ask the same few-shot example, then the model will literally memorize it. So it's a different uh, test example and then the actual ground truth, which will allow us to evaluate the reward. So given the context, the model generates a self-edit, SE, which varies by domain, we'll discuss this, and then updates its parameters via supervised fine-tuning, SFT, using a LoRa adapter head, okay? And then, yeah, we optimize the SE by updating a policy to maximize expected reward. So essentially, we're maximizing a reward such that the policy gives us the best self-edits. Uh, if you understand expectation and conditional probability, then go ahead and read that, but no thank you for me. Unlike in standard RL setup, the reward assigned to a given action in our setting depends on the model parameters data at the time the action is taken. So what this means is that because we are updating our models to achieve a task at a given time step, we cannot use, for example, a replay buffer. So a replay buffer essentially stores your previous generations and then uses this to update the policy all at once. It's called off policy learning because you're not updating the policy on the data in a concurrent manner. It's actually just kind of sampling data from a replay buffer and improving the policy this way. But because each task is specific to the context, then using a old parameter set um, essentially saying maybe come stale and misaligned for the current model. And therefore we adopt an on policy approach in which self edits are sampled and crucially rewards are computed using the current model. So yeah, it's just on policy, meaning we use the current model only. They do talk about GRPO and PPO, but for whatever reason, this was too complex uh, or rather unstable. And so they use what's something called RESTEM. Feel free to look that up on your own time, but it uses rejection sampling and SFT, which are two methods also used by DeepSeek. So there you have it. Let's go through this algorithm one because hopefully this will allow you to better understand <laughs> the process itself. So we have our large language model and our data set with the context and the ground truth, tau. Then we do T iterations where we sample from this data set and then we generate a self-edit, multiple self-edits. And then in our inner loop, we will fine tune our model using a lower adapter head on these self-edits to see if it will improve the model's performance on that task. And then we will evaluate compute the reward, which is literally a binary reward. And then we will update our reinforcement learning policy, which is what gives us our self-edits, whether or not the self-edit was helpful to the model performing well on that context. 
And like I mentioned before, the reward is literally binary. So if I have no idea what's called tau, it should just be called like the ground truth. But if the generation is the same as tau, then it's one, otherwise it's zero. Yeah, there's a lot of log probabilities going on here. And let's see what we have. We note that while this implementation is just a single model, for both generating the self-edits and learning from these self-edits, this is what we refer to as the double loop. So generating self-edits is the inner loop. And then learning from these self-edits with the reinforcement learning policy is the external loop. They're saying that you could also have a teacher doing one loop and then a student on another. So a student model would be updated using edits proposed by a separate teacher model. And the teacher would be trained via reinforcement learning to generate edits that maximize student improvement. So um, maybe like a, a whole paper could be written just attempting this strategy. That sounds quite compelling. In fact, I just thought of this. But for the time being, it's only a single model. Honestly, if you can reduce complexity, then that usually is good overall. But this is just a general statement. So we talk about two domains here, knowledge incorporation and few-shot learning. Um, let's start with knowledge incorporation. So the goal is to efficiently incorporate the information in, a model, in the model's weights from a passage. And a promising recent approach uses a large language model to generate content derived from the passage, passage followed by fine-tuning on both the original passage and the generated content. This is to say that the LLM will interpret the context in its own way and then supervise fine-tuning on that. For example, it could just literally say, rewrite the passage or rewrite it in a Q&A format. And What's interesting is that our method improves performance by a similar greater margin regardless of the base prompt. So it's kind of prompt agnostic, I would say. And in this example, we have a statement about the Apollo program saying that Jeremy Wiesner was against something. Okay, and then the large language model gives the impl implications. So when I mentioned implications, this is what uh, I was referring to. Let's quickly just get up to here in knowledge updating. Generating logical implications of a fact and fine-tuning on them. So what are the logical implications of this statement? Well, it is one, the Paul program faced opposition from Kennedy's science advert, two, blah, 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 blah. And then based on these implications, we have our new adopted weight. And then on evaluation, it literally just asks who was opposed. And then if it gets Jeremy Wisner right, then the reward is one. So in another way, figure two shows a loop where the model drafts notes. So if we think of like the same student context, draft notes, which are there, briefly studies them, which is this step, tests itself, which is this step, and then keeps drafting styles that, that help, which is to say in the next iterations on new data. And the lasting learning comes from reinforcing the drafting policy. So in essence, this step of drafting new self-edits and not from accumulating the trans in lower weight. So this was more my misunderstanding. I thought that these weights are actually kept if the reward is one, but no, this is in fact just a way to test if the self-edit was successful. So this weight, because they use LoRa, which they mentioned is efficient and lightweight, it's possible to just discard it. And even though it's still less computationally efficient as other methods using reinforcement learning, it's still uh, very feasible. And also they only had a 1 billion parameter model. If you look at the figure description itself, we say we fine tune on these outputs using LoRa and the updated model, of course, has to answer the question without access to the original text. If that was the case, then this would literally be a moot point. It would know exactly what to say because this, was in, this would be in its context. Uh, and then the resulting accuracy is the reward signal for the RL. And in this case, the reward signal would be one. Okay. These self-generated statements form the training data for the SFC update, which is to say that we compute the standard causal language model loss, which is to say cross entropy. I'm not sure why they're using, yeah, complex terms to sound sophisticated over each sequence and update the model parameters yielding this. Uh, theta apostrophe, since the amount of data per update is small and the number of updates we do in total is large. So like literally this is just the data, it's small and the number of updates is large. We use LoRa for efficient lightweight tuning and then the adapted LM is valued on task T. So this part here. Okay. And then during RL training, the models, the adaptive models accuracy on tau defines the reward R that drives the outer RL optimization. This trains the model to restructure the passage in a way that's more effective for simulation via fine tuning, which is to say that by the reinforcement learning process, the model will get better at structuring this self-edit such that the supervised fine tuning is more efficient at ensuring that the reward or the performance on the task is good. Now let's look at the few shot setup. So this is what was used with ArcAGI. We have some complex reasoning question problem, and then we have two self edits. So the first one are augmentations. This is to say increasing the data size by doing some changes. In this case, we are doing basic augmentations, which may be like rotations. I'm not sure. And then this is the one where they literally also propose hyperparameters as a part of the self edit, uh, like learning suggestion or the study notes. So in this case, we have augmented the data from six to eight. And then we perform a supervised fine tuning on our model. And then we'll test our model on some new data. So if you look here, this exact H is not in the training set, of course, because you don't mix training and test. And then if this is correct, in that case, we will adopt 
or we will not adopt, but we will accept this for our reinforcement learning policy, which is what is generating self edits. So I kind of mentioned everything here already. Augmentations of few HL examples are used to, to perform gradient based adaptation. And these augmentations are kind of either data augmentations, or yeah, these are the augmentations, the so rotation slips, reflections, transpositions, etc. And then there's also the optimization parameters. So learning rate, number of training epochs, and whether the loss is computed over all tokens or only output tokens. Oh yeah, they're here. The strategy is loss on all tokens. I'm not entirely sure what this refers to for SFT, but yeah, if somebody knows, then please put that in the comment section, actually. In terms of results, I mentioned the only important result, which is 72.5 to 20%, 52.5% increase, increase in performance. Quite remarkable. And then here, if we look at Knowledge Incorporation, they just have an example of how it improves iteratively. In this example, we show how RL leads to the generation of more detailed self-edits, which in turn results in better performance. While the progression is clear in this case, the differences across iterations are sometimes more subtle in other examples. Uh, and all they're saying is that prompting for longer self-edits is effective and RL training for the improved performance by a similar margin. So in this case, from iteration one, zero to two, the self-edit study notes become longer and I, I, I assume more helpful to the model. And then in this case, these are the answers. So after iteration two, it's able to answer all three questions. Whereas in the first iteration, iteration zero, or the zeroth iteration, it only succeeds at answering two questions. So I guess all they're saying here is that it seems that length of the study notes is correlated to performance. One thing though worth noting is the catastrophic forgetting of self-edits. So as one could intuit, over time, the self-edits that we made previously will be kind of overwritten or at least become weaker compared to the most recent ones. So if we look here, we have two axes. The passage index indicates what training set were uh, like training instance example sample we're using so the the zeroth first second third up to seventh so this would be like the last sample that we've trained on and then the number of iterations is just showing what training iteration we're on so as would be expected for the seventh index we only start uh iterating on that after the seventh iteration because like at the zeroth iteration we haven't even seen the seventh sample right because it's based on the index so we have to wait seven time steps to get to that iteration. And all you want to really see is that as you move down, it's becoming shallower, which means a or um, bright, uh, less bright, uh, duller, there you go, which means that the performance is decreasing. So it's becoming worse. What I like to look at is the first example, which means that in our first iteration, the performance on passage index zero improved a lot because we just trained on it. But then after the second, third, fourth, at the eighth iteration, after we've trained on the seventh passage index, the performance drops by double actually. So uh, 0.38 to 0.09, meaning that the performance decreases over time for specific passages. But maybe this is just because it's a 1 billion parameter model. I'm just theorizing though. As I mentioned before, there is a larger computational overhead for this test time training, which is what we're doing with the lower adapter heads. And that, that's, all, that's really all I have to say about that. It's just more computationally expensive. And then there's also context dependent evaluation, which means that we're assuming that for every context, we have a ground truth. So like supervised training. And what they say here is that you can perhaps make the model generate the answers for itself, which seems like it shouldn't work, like generating your own training data and then training on it. But this has been shown to work, I guess, over time. In the conclusion, we say SEAL demonstrates that large language models need not to remain static after pre-training by learning to generate their own synthetic self data at a data and to apply it through lightweight, lightweight, wait, Okay, that's really poorly phrased. Anyways, lightweight weight updates, they can autonomously incorporate new knowledge and adapt to novel tasks, looking at the envision extending the SEAL framework to pre-training, continue learning, and agentic models, ultimately enabling LLMs to self-learn and scale in a data-constrained world. So I think it's pretty interesting. Essentially, what they're saying is that LLMs no longer need to be frozen weights once they've been trained. They can essentially learn like humans and pretty groundbreaking, at least according to me. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs>